Back in the 2000s, Intel made a big splash with their Atom processors. They pushed the idea that Atoms and netbooks went hand in hand. But did you know you had another choice? Yeah, AMD also had a line of low-powered CPUs. To the right is my AMD-based Acer Aspire 1 D722, and as you can see, it's a bit larger than the other and has a slightly higher resolution screen and a much better keyboard. To the left is my Atom-based Acer Aspire 1 D255. Even though this model was released a year before the D722, it was still being sold alongside them in stores. There was also an updated Acer netbook which used the N455 CPU. However, the only real difference was that it could support DDR3 RAM. The performance was about the same as the N450. This video, however, is not so much about the netbooks themselves, but the processors driving them. So let's take a quick look at the N450 Atom and see how well it holds up against AMD's C60. As you can see here, the C60 looks like a much better bargain by the specs. The C60 was actually an APU and had integrated Radeon HD 6290 graphics, which, while not mind-blowing, was far better than Intel's onboard GMA 3150 graphics. The C60 could access up to 8 gigs of RAM, while the Atom, well, yeah, Two gigs. Even the Atom N550, which was a hyper-threaded dual-core, was still also limited to 2 gigs. The C60 also has more cache, and really all this, and it only uses slightly more power. Now just a note, I have no way of directly capturing VGA, so I'll have to record the monitor with my camera. I used an external monitor so that both netbooks could run at the same resolution. In Passmark CPU test, the Atom fell far behind. Even in the single-threaded test, the C60 scored 100 points higher. The memory test was more of the same. This Atom is running on DDR2 memory, while the C60 is DDR3, so the N455 might score it a little bit higher here. The disk mark portion also showed the Atom falling behind, and, and these netbooks had the same model SSDs installed, so the Atom just has slower I.O. In 7-zip, the C60 finished about 7 minutes before the Atom. Sure, the C60 was a true dual-core, but both networks were priced about the same. In Cinebench R20, the Atom finished nearly an hour after the C60. I should also mention that both netbooks, when tested, were placed on top of a laptop cooler with their bottom panels removed, so there was no thermal throttling. Handbrake was a nightmare. You'd have to be extremely desperate or a complete fool to try and render HD video on a netbook. This 10-minute clip took the C60 four and a half hours to render, but the Atom, yeah, that was almost double that, finishing in 7 hours and 37 minutes. Again, remember, this was only a 10-minute H.264 clip. So, can you use these things to watch YouTube? Well, back in the day, at standard def, sure. But you see here how they handled 720p. Both were running h 264 and while the C60 isn't perfect, it's far better than the Atom. Once it gets going, it seems to play relatively smoothly, but the Atom, it just wasn't having it. Okay, games. Well, neither of these are gaming laptops, and I'm limited on what I could actually get running on both. Porsche Unleashed ran, however, I played this game on a Pentium 2 with a Voodoo 2 GPU back in the day, so it better run. And yeah, as you can see, both did pretty well. But the C60 was always about 5 FPS higher than the Atom. GTA San Andreas, well, technically it ran on both, but once we got outside, the Atom became completely unplayable. Not only was the frame rate super low, but the controls were lagging bad. If I would steer right, it would take up to three seconds before it took effect in the game. The C60, while it wasn't great, it's definitely playable. Quake 2 ran fine on both, but the C60 was usually 50 to 100 frames faster. The insane Quake benchmark shows this as the Atom averaged 65 FPS to the C60's 111. And last, Unreal. I just let the opening run, and I apologize for the terrible capture quality of the Atom. However, in here they are pretty much neck and neck, with the Atom actually pulling ahead by about 1 FPS. I grabbed results from a previous test of a Celeron D. In most tests, the Atom actually performed far worse than the Celeron. Who knew that was even possible? In the few games that I tested, well, you can see, it's not meant for gaming. I couldn't even get Heaven, Tropics, or Sanctuary to run on the Atom. I do actually use this AMD netbook to this day. It's not exactly fast, but the battery life is incredible. And it works well sitting on a workbench while I'm, you know, messing around with Arduinos or flashing firmware onto something, or really anything else that doesn't require a lot of CPU power. If I need to look something up on the web quick, I just RDP it on my desktop. But that's it. As I always say, if you made it this far, thank you, and I'll see you next time. I'm still working on the other Dell video, so keep an eye out for that in the next week or so. See you later. Bye-bye.